Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. If you're a brother or sister in the spiritual walk, then you need to give the most highs agendas objectives and not your own. If hell doesn't exist, how do you explain Samuel coming up from the world of the dead to prophesy the downfall of King Saul? In this um, presentation, I will show that um, hell is much more than a condition, but it is a realm where the souls of the dead people reside according to the scriptures. First, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, the King and Savior of Israel. This is Brother Mikael, and I'm um, doing this lesson um, an example of um, Samuel prophesying um, from the dead, showing that um, hell is a place where the souls of dead souls reside at, and it's more than just a condition as um, some people may have you believe. Without any more delay, let's um, get to this lesson started from 1 Samuel chapter 28. 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 3. Now Samuel was dead. And all Israel had lamented him and buried, and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. So um, people that have a familiar spirits or wizards are people that communicate with the spirits and souls of the dead. For more context, um, Let's um, bring up Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31, which says, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am Yahweh, your God. And for more context, um, Leviticus 19, 31, out the contemporary English version, says, Don't make yourselves disgusting to me by going to people who claim they can talk to the dead. So the Most High does not want us um, dealing with um, trying to talk to the ancestors or um, souls of people that are deceased because we will make ourselves um, defiled and abominable before him. Back to um, 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 4. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of Yahweh, Yahweh answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. So um, Saul uh, gathered his um, troops to face off against the Philistines, and they must have had a very imposing um, multitude of soldiers, which... Um, but fear against had of King Saul. So he tried to seek the Lord, but um, he's been li living in iniquity and out the will of the Most High for so long. The Most High cut him off, and um, through no means of communication would the Lord um, or Yahweh talk to him, King Saul. We got to be careful with our walk with the Most High too, not to um, take it for granted or willingly um, be disobedient to him. John 9 31 says now we know that God heareth not sinners but if any man be a worshiper of God and doth his will him he heareth so it's important for us to be um, respect the most high and be in good standing with him because he does not um, care of sinners he did not want to be find himself in the same predicament as Saul was when he uh, was in need of the Lord for um, deliverance back to 1 Samuel um 28 verse 7 now then said Saul unto his servants seek me a woman that have a familiar spirit so a woman that uh, communicates with um, the souls of the dead that I may go to her and inquire of her and his servant said to him behold there is a woman that have a familiar spirit at Endor and Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment so he um so King Saul um disguised himself and put on um clothes to make himself unrecognizable like um, some of you guys 
do on Halloween when you go um, trick or treating. Say you want to be um, recognized when you go do your dirt. So Saul disguised himself and put on another raiment, and he went and two men with him. And they came to the women by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. So he so he went to the lady and him, put a request in to him, conjure up a spear for him, based on the person who he who he's going to request. Verse 9. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? So the woman, um, not knowing that this was King Saul, was um, checking him, make sure that he wasn't an agent, that this wasn't um, a, a bus to try to set her up to um, cause her to um, lose her life or get kicked out of the land. So she's saying, you know, this is illegal, this is outlawed in the land. I'm not, I'm not, not, I'm not sure if I'm, I, I don't do this type of work. Verse 10. And Saul swore to her by, the, by Yahweh, saying, As Yahweh liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. So he's just, just reassuring her that you'll be good. Then um, do nothing um, I might do what I requested to do, and um, nothing will happen to, to you on my end, as um, Yahweh liveth. He swore unto her. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up to thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. So the woman um, went ahead with um, King Saul and disguised disguise and request to um, conjure up the soul of um, Samuel. Then um, she found out after she brought up Samuel that um, that was King Saul that put the request in. And so she was asking, why, why did you deceive me? Well, what's going on here? 1 Samuel 20 verse 13. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto her, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. So she's seen um, souls ascending out of the earth. Not from heaven, but out of the earth. And that's a key point they're showing at um, she saw the she's opened up the portals of hell. Because um, hell is unreal. It's definitely a it's a realm in the earth. Let me um, bring up Matthew 12 for more context. Matthew 12, I think it's 38. Okay, okay, Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. This is Yahweh's words. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So in this passage in Matthew 12, 40, um, Yahweh Shah is talking about his death where he's going to be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now he was not talking about his body sitting in the tomb. It wasn't unusual back then for the tombs to be um, above ground. But he was talking about his um, soul being in the heart of the earth in um, Sheo or hell. That's what he's talking about, the heart of the earth, because that's the location. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm trying to put this um, puzzle together for you so you can um, understand it. So this woman, um, she summoned up the soul of um, Samuel and she saw um, gods ascending out of the earth. Now that's key that there was ascending out of the earth. First Samuel twenty-eight, fourteen. And she said unto her, and he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, 
an old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle, or a robe. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. Now when you look at the word perceived, um, on surface in the English language, it looks like um, you think of that as um, a thought, because perceived means you're not quite sure, you're not able to confirm. When we look up the word in Hebrew, perceived, the Hebrew word is um, yada, which means to know. So it should have read, um, so Saul knew that it was Samuel. With, um, he, that he knew it was Samuel with um, confidence. He confidently knew that it was Samuel. And he um, reverenced him by stooping with his face to the ground there, because he confirmed and knew that it was Samuel. Another key point I want to bring out for the gods of the earth um, to show that um, hell is real is um, Ecclesiastes 12.7. This is probably where a lot of um, Israelites and Christians, um, this is what probably what throws them off that um, hell doesn't exist. Hell is answered the road of the dead. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So when you die, according to this passage, your um, body returns to the dust of the ground. And the spirit, which is um, your breath, returns to God who gave it. And where does God dwell? He dwells in heaven. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1, which says... Thus says Yahweh, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? Where is the place of my rest? So, so the heaven is his throne. So he dwells in the heavens. He doesn't um, dwell in the earth. And your spirit goes back, which is your breath goes back to the most high. So um, to go more to death in that, keep that in mind. So your body returns to the earth, which is the dust. Your breath goes back to the most high but how about your um soul there's um a third component to um a person which is the soul and then first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 confirms it which says and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord or Adonai Yahushai HaMashiach so in this passage, the Apostle Paul understands that there's three main components to a human being, which is your spirit, which is your breath, your soul, which is the thing that makes you animate, which goes to um, hell or the holding place of um, the road of the dead when you die or pass away, and your body which returns to your ground. Be um, blameless, be preserved blameless to the coming of the Lord. So there's um, three our components of the body. When you have that understanding, then you can understand, um, have a better understanding about hell being the road of the dead and um, not in a condition that um, Blacks and Hispanics are um, dealing, dealing with because of the curses according to the Bible then. So hell is real and um, King Saul and the witch of um, the woman of Endor summoned up Samuel's soul from hell. So back to 1 Samuel 28, and we're at um, verse, let me start at 13 again. So when the king said unto her, be not afraid for what saw was thou. And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. So I hope that makes sense now. Um, about God sending out the earth and the concept of hell, how they go hand in hand. She's described what she's seen open up the portals of hell. 1 Samuel 20, 14. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? So why have you disturbed me to bring me up? So that's another key point showing that 
I, this is um, the hell is real land um, because um, doing the necromantic um, act of slack if I mispronounced the word of conjuring souls um, his soul was summoned up from hell from his resting place and Saul answered I am sore distressed for the Philistines make war against me and God has departed from me and answer me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. So that's the key part of verse 15. Um, why did you um, disquiet to me to bring me up? Now some people, now there's a lot of people that teach in religion that um, you can't call souls from the dead or communicate with them the dead, and now just the spirit. But this passage in, um, I'm going to bring up the Second Chronicles chapter 18 show that um, spirits come down. So this example of um, spirits coming down. So this is, so Paul was actually, I mean, um, Salaki, King Saul was communicated with um, Samuel's soul from, brought up from hell. This is Second Chronicles chapter 18, verse 18. Example of um, spirits and um, dwelling um, with the Most High. And he said, therefore, Hear the word of Yahweh. I saw Yahweh sitting upon his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. So this prophet um, is looking at the council in heaven. And Yahweh said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake, saying, After this manner, and another, saying, After that manner. Then there came out a spirit and stood before Yahweh and said, I will entice him. And Yahweh said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, So let's talk about the spirit. I will go out and be in a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And Yahweh said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. So this was, so I just wrote this um, example out in St. Chronicles 18 to show that um, the spirits, even the lying spirits, um, have to um, get permission from the Lord before they um, go out to see. So they um coming um, down from um, the presence and throne room of the Lord. And they're not coming up from the earth then. So that's a key point um, that um, the author Samuel conveyed in uh, 1 Samuel 28 that um, Samuel came up from the earth when he was summoned, when his um, soul was summoned. So back to 1 Samuel 20. 1 Samuel 28, verse 16. Then Samuel, wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing that I was departed from thee, and has become thy enemy? So Samuel's asking Saul, um, why are you disturb, disturbing me, seeing that um, the, Yahweh departed from me and that you're an enemy of the Lord now? What, what can I do for you now, since I'm the Most High cut you off? And Yahweh have done to him as he spake by me. For Yahweh have rent the kingdom out of thine hand and give it to thy neighbor, even to David, to David. Because thou obeyest not the voice of Yahweh, nor executest his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore hath Yahweh done this thing unto thee this day. So he's saying because of your tra past transgressions, that's why the Lord uh, Yahweh cut you off. He's not dealing with you no more. It's a wrap, you're finished. Verse 19. Moreover, Yahweh will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. Yahweh also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. So that, that's the power, powerful right there too. So it's saying that um, Yahweh is going to deliver Israel to the hand of the Philistines. And that you and your sons will be with me. Now that goes over, that's pretty deep. That goes over a lot of your heads. I want to bring out... Um, 1 Samuel 28, 19, I want to read this um, 
in the CEV, the Contemporary English Version. 1 Samuel 20, 19, the CEV um, Bible says, Tomorrow, Yahweh will let the Philistines defeat Israel's armies. Then you and your sons will join me, will join me down here in the world of the dead, which is um, hell. So the authors of translators of the Contemporary English Version Bible um, realizes, or they understood that um, Samuel was called up from hell to him, prophesying that um, King Saul and his son's souls are going to be um, with Samuel's So in hell, he's not talking about the grave, but in, in hell then. And I want to look up um, the word hell in the Bible also for more um, context and clarity. Job 11, um, 8. It is as high as heaven. What canst thou do deeper than hell? What canst thou know? So this is telling you that this is passage of Job 11, 8, showing that um, hell is, um, this lines up with Matthew 12, 40. The heart of the earth was deeper than hell. And uh, the context in um, 1 Samuel 28, where um, Samuel's soul was um, brought up. Now let me see if I can um, look up the word hell from Job 11, 8. The strongest word is um, H 7585, which is Sheo. The definition for Sheol was um, is Sheol, underworld, grave, hell, pit. The underworld. And I like this at the bottom, the strongest definition. It says it comes from age 7592 Hades, or the world of the dead. And that's the exact um, phrase um, they used in um, 1 Samuel 28, 19 out of the CEV um, translation, which says tomorrow, which says, then you and your sons will join me down here in the world of the dead, which means you and your sons are going to join me in, in hell. So hell is real, family. I need to quit playing with these um, scriptures, saying it doesn't exist. If hell doesn't exist, then... Um, where did um, Samuel, who was dead already, come from to prophesy the downfall of um, Israel and King Saul? And where did he come from if hell doesn't exist? Then? For Samuel 20, it makes it very clear that um, hell is, exists. Okay, next I want to go to Sirach chapter um, 46. Starting at verse 13 out of the Apocrypha, Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 46. Give me a second to pull it up. Alright, Sirach 46 verse 13 says, Samuel, the prophet of Yahweh, beloved of his Lord established a kingdom and anointed princesses over his people. So remember, he appointed King Saul to be ruler over the people. By the law of Yahweh, he judged the congregation. Yahweh had respect unto Jacob. By his faithfulness, he was found a true prophet. And by his word, he was known to be faithful in vision. He called upon the mighty Lord when his enemies pressed upon him on every side, when he offered the suckling lamb. And the Lord thundered from heaven, and with a great noise made his voice to be heard. He destroyed the rulers of the Titerians and all the princes of the Philistines. And before his long sleep, he made protestations in the sight of Yahweh and his anointed. I have not taken any man's goods so much as a shoe, and no man did accuse him. Now check this out, this is the key part. Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 46, verse 20. And after his death, he prophesied, and showed the king his end, and lifted up his voice from the earth, and prophesied 
to blot out wickedness of the people. So this is not talking about his um, dead corpse house laying um, in the tomb or in the grave. This is talking about his um, soul from hell. Talking about he lifted his voice from in the, from the earth, which is um, hell or Sheol, to blot out the wickedness of the people. I want to stop this lesson from here. I don't want to drag it too long. I got um, a, another powerful source to um, continue expounding on um, the existence of hell, the reality of existence of hell. So I definitely hope this lesson was edifying. And I'm definitely um, leave me some feedback whether you agree or you um, disagree on why hell, um, the world of the dead, um, doesn't exist according to the scriptures then. What am I misreading and, or what are you seen in 1 Samuel 20 that shows that hell doesn't exist. I'd definitely love to hear your take, fam, all you guys that teach that hell doesn't exist. This is Brother Mikael. All praise, glory, and honor to the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son. Shalom.